I can't believe where I am today. They've never allowed a single camera in here before, and we're gonna get to go check it out. <laughs> and I gotta ask, are all the machines yellow? No. It's easier to say what we don't have than <laughs> what, what we uh, do have. I just like how clean and shiny everything in, in here is. So this is where we actually make the tool. Welcome to the production unit in Mabin. That's right. We're here at Sandvik in North Carolina. This is the Sandvik Cormont Center. We do a lot of testing and stuff. We uh, bring customers in, we do a lot of programs. We do make custom solutions for customers, but standard articles. This is an assortment of some of the standard articles we make. So you guys make, physically make the bodies for these here? Yes, all of this, we, we make everything but the carbide inserts here. What kind of machines will we be seeing that you're turning this kind of stuff on? Is this five axis mills? Is yeah, this mill five turn? axis mills. Uh, we do have mill turns. Uh, we have a vast variety of machines that can handle multiple sizes. Uh, some are, you know, faster spindles, different things. So, you know, depending on the product is where we kind of make it. So. And I got to ask, are all the machines yellow? No. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> to do even these really thin, like this is for oh, yeah. uh, mounting on an arbor. It's almost yep. like a slitting saw, right? Yep. You guys would make that here. What kind of steel is that just off the top of your head? We use different types of steel depending on the process. So is that not machined in? It is. But do you see the coolant holes? Oh. And then, now you see where they come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those coolant holes go like this through the steel. And that's something you guys do in-house. Mm -hmm. This is basically a spot for experts, but that's where we, Have you know, yellow he, coat up. yeah, when we actually go to the machine, to the customer and go down to earth and standing at the spindle and trying to solve the problem, look at the problem and come up with some uh, good solutions. And like, for example, this center, we do customer project here and this is lathe that I'm working on and it's usually my uh, go-to really quick, Ooh. easy. This is the one you run on a bit daily basis? This uh, is your baby? It, that's my kind of basically my a little a go-to. If I need to do something really quick uh, and set up something to run a test cut or see the chip formation to observe, you know, geometries of the insert and see. Sometimes this can be a different materials we, we're testing and how our insert perform. Now for a tool like this, you guys actually make, this is what's so cool to me. Yes. The, some of these solid holders are actually made back there. Exactly. That's crazy. So they pull them here, put the insert on, and then you can see how this thing actually performs. Yes. So we basically, sometimes we work with R and D as well. So let's say we have a one of a kind tool. Customer wants a tool that doesn't exist yet. We can run a tool. Actually that happened recently. Uh, customer wanted the tool, we never done it, we created a tool, we brought it here, we tested, the customer came over, it was super excited, and we, we're moving forward with, with the process. It's so awesome to, to be able to do that. Oh, absolutely. So, this is really cool. Did you, have you seen this tool before? I haven't, and I don't, is it an external, I have no idea what that's for, external boring? Or external fine it's, boring? It's actually Y axis turning. How? Sh show me. Show me what this does. So, it's usually will go for multitask machine, and not every machine can do it. But what is happening? You're not cutting an X axis anymore. Right. You're moving. You get to the X X zero, but you're moving in. You're cutting in Y, and guess what's going to happen? All the Cutting forces, instead of going radially, it goes straight to the strongest point, it's which is spindle. Super rigid. Exactly. Oh, I understand. Not only that, certain machines, for example, like Integrates has a gear which is created axis on its own. Mm -hmm. It can rotate, so you can do profiling, consistent oh. profiling. It's not a V axis, it's a Y axis profiling. So that whole thing actually rotates as it goes. As I've it seen goes. that, but I've never seen the tools that do yes, it. Yes, so that's the actual tool. And that's really cool. And when you're trying to be super productive, this is a really cool tool because it, it do roughing and finishing at the same time. So you just have to rotate, oh. do the roughing with the round, and then you go 
and finish it. So console. literally, if there's the workpiece, this is going to go, and it can do that same yep. profiling. Yep. It'll go do it, flip, and you can go back the other way. Exactly. Even. So rough, finish, and parts done. That's awesome. That's incredible. And that's got that through coolant, just like everything exactly. else. Exactly. Exactly. It has a little weight, you know, the, this rail that allows you to keep the insert in place. That's really something. We have the Mazak, the Axis 700T. Is that on the other it, side there? That's on the other side. Can we take a peek at it? So it's 18,000 RPM, um, 700 inches a minute. 18,000 RPM? 18,000 RPM, 700 inches a minute. And that's what allows me to um, do my aluminum testing. We do a lot of fast movements so you, because we, re we released um, our aluminum offer now and uh, we're doing conducting some testing on it because it, it, it requires a lot of speed and feed and this one can take it. And you guys generate a lot of scrap or a lot of chips out of this thing, I'm sure. Oh, it's, it, it, <laughs> there's a lot of chips because when you're doing solid round tools, chips just pop up. So you're quickly. just milling that material as fast exactly. as it can possibly go. Exactly. So this is all aerospace over here. Yes. What's that giant? Is that a DMG? It, that is DMG. It's 125 dual block. Wow. That thing is huge. So this is DLM, which is digital live machining. We have a camera here and we can do the customer projects in this DMU and customer will never have to leave the house because there's cameras, microphone, uh, there's a CNC screen that you can project. So customer can see everything on Teams and the CNC controller, he can see the part, he can hear the part, he can hear us when we communicate and it'd be the huge success for us. Oh, absolutely. Just the ability to see not only are you recommending a tool, but they can see how it's cutting exactly. in their application exactly. live. Yes. And do you guys do a lot of that? Yeah, we do a lot, but right now, since the COVID uh, restriction lifted, people want to travel more, so they come over to the center. And, I will, and I'm actually more than happy for them to come over here. They just want to come see all this cool exactly. stuff. Exactly. <laughs> now, what kind of tests? Obviously, aerospace, but what kind of... Are you guys basically trying to replicate customer parts for them in here? Is this for the, well, more of the tooling solutions? It's more about customers. Everything, it's all about customer project. We focus everything to make sure that we accommodate and accommodate and help. I have another one. It's a Mazak integrates I-450 AG. It was specifically spec to the rim and uh, it's easier to say what we don't have than <laughs> what, what we uh, do have because every, all the options pretty much highlighted. If, it, if you can get it, it's got it. Yes, and Jeez. and what it has an M axis that that allows you to do auto gears. Okay. So it's a lot. Uh, you know power scaving? I I'm familiar with it, but I don't know a lot about it. Okay. So power scaving, it's you know, it's a new kind of it's our kind of thing, and we develop and custom made the cutters and parts, and we do a process. But in order to do that. You have to have machines that are capable of doing that. Right. And this uh, specific machine was spec specifically, so we were able to do that. I just like how clean and shiny everything in, in here is. Well, you have to understand that that's kind of, at the same time, it's a work environment because we're constantly working on something, but it's also a showroom. Right. Because we're bringing our customers, we're working on very... We we're trying to accommodate, and we know that we want something. We want to help customers at, at the end because this is this is when they have problems. That's what this place for. You're here to solve it for them. Who <laughs> provided that support? Guys, you're not going to believe this. When we showed up today. We were hoping, we were praying we were gonna to get to do this, but we didn't know if we were gonna be allowed on the production floor because they have never, ever let a camera behind those doors. I can't believe we're gonna to get to see this, but they're actually gonna take us back, give us a tour and let us record it. So this is where we actually make the tools. This is where we make the tools. So welcome to the production unit in Mevin. Started off all manual equipment, you know, making simple turning tools and you know, over the past, uh, 40 odd years, it's turned into what you see now. So this is, you do standards, you do customs, you do we everything do, right here. We do everything here, uh, it's made to stock, made to order, uh, design, programming, everything here. Some of the 
digital solutions that Sandvik offers that we also implement into our production. Uh, CG Tech Barricut. So in Barricut, the machine is modeled, the tooling is modeled, and we can, the operators can actually watch the program run in a virtual war, world before they even put it on the machine. So it's another way to make sure everything's not gonna crash, not gonna blow up. Absolutely. And make sure you're getting the result you want before you even make yes. the chip. And every single made to standard item, uh, every job runs through Barricut automatically before it hits the shop floor. So we don't have machine crashes anymore. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing that could happen. I still have it crashes in my is. shop, so I'm it quite act, impressed by know, that. And how many people would be on this production floor on any kind of given day? Oh, I think we have a total of maybe 60 operators. So over three shifts, actually four shifts, we run a weekend crew as well. So uh, we don't have a whole lot of people on the floor every day, which is why we utilize so much automation. You run every size of cutter in this facility. I see smaller, I see bigger, I see really big. We do. So in this area, we run up to five inch diameter and smaller cutters. Uh, we utilize twin spindle machine on this side and a single spindle machine there. Both of them are dual work pieces though. So this one's doing twice the work. That one might have two parts in it, but it's one spindle, but it gives us uh, more flexibility for product. And this is one of the biggest robot arms I have <laughs> ever seen. And certainly one of the biggest cells. I've never seen an arm that has tooling up that high, parts down this low. What exactly is this doing? So everything is automated. When the operators get a job, uh, you know, through our systems, files are generated. Uh, by the work order number, we can register the product on the pallet. The robot itself will go up, pick out the fixture that's needed. So these are all different. They're uh, end mill fixtures, they're shell mill fixtures, capto fixtures, all different coupling styles. Picks the one it needs, loads the part on it, puts it in the machine, runs it. It actually deburs the part uh, in the back. Well, start to finish. Yep, start to finish. So from a blank to a finished part. And what's this right here? Uh, this is the VTM, so this turns up to uh, 28 inches, uh, so a very large vertical lathe. Uh, we do implement our Coro Turn Prime solution in all of our turning applications. So I don't know if you know what Coro Turn Prime is. That's where you can turn both ways yeah. using the same tool, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's doing that again in hardened steel. Yes. You mind if we go around that machine? This thing is absolutely huge. Now, what kind of tooling would you guys be running in this? This is for your big slot cutters or for face cutters? What kind of? Uh, lots of all of the above. So <laughs> we do uh, pretty much all of our large diameter tools that we turn, we turn over here. Uh, we use Cormont Capto tools. So uh, most of our equipment is equipped with the original Sandvik Cormont Capto. And just to point this out, these are some of the blanks. This is the size of yeah. some of the stuff you guys are running in here. It is. What's the heaviest part you guys run here? 500 pounds, I believe. Jeez. I'm seeing more lathes with bar feeders. Obviously, a, this is a very turn heavy area over here. Yeah, this is our uh, kind of our blanking area. So we try to keep a linear flow through our process. So everything comes through the back door, uh, kind of gets blanked and turned through the mills. Uh, some of it's coming back to our grinders, uh, our surface treatment and black oxide then our assembly and boxing and shipping out the door. Oh, so, so you guys actually do heat treatment and black oxide all right in-house? We do black oxide in-house, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a giant grinding wheel. It is. So that is uh, the system to change the grinding wheel. That whole thing is just to change the wheel? Yes, the arm here. Wow, and I'm taking it, that's because this is a giant grinder. It is a pretty good size grinder. Uh, utilizing a lot of automation, uh, automation in the measuring, the loading, and so it picks the parts off the conveyor, loads them, grinds them, returns them. So wait, that red thing right there, I'm guessing that is something to do with an optical sensor. It is, so that is the camera where it sees the part, so it picks it up and move it in. And what area are we going into here? So right now we're kind of going into uh, the backside of our, our standard cutter operations and our milling cutters with the cells. And uh, this over here, would be, uh, we can look at the black oxide line, which is automated. Still the area that we produce, uh, the cutters that are five inches in diameter are, are smaller over here. It's crazy to me that five inch diameter is considered a standard. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an automated system. 
the operator can load it up and scans it in and it runs through the system itself. This is a warm black. We used to have a hot black, so this one is much more environment environmentally friendly. And how many parts, this thing I guess would just do pretty much every part that comes out of here that gets a coating, yep. black oxide it goes is through here. This line yeah, here. it'll handle the largest diameter parts we make. So. Wow. That's pretty crazy. I've never seen someone do it in-house on a scale like that. Through this area is uh, we call our medium machining. So these machines will handle up to 10 inch diameter parts. 10 uh, inch. 10 inches. So. I know I keep saying this, but it just blows my mind that cutters are coming out frequently enough at that diameter that you have a line specifically oh, for yeah. up to 10 inch. And keep in mind that we call that our medium area. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a large area where we produce cutters up to 40 inches. So. And the one thing I'm seeing here, I'm seeing these big orange robots working away. I mean, I know we're seeing the back of one of them, but how many of these kind of cells do you guys have here? So we currently have four. Uh, we have another one in the works, um, but they do run quite a bit. And it really, it frees up the operator. So you're not paying a guy to, you know, just bolt parts in. And, you know, as I touch base on, these guys are very skilled. You know, we don't have button pushers. Uh, right. You know, and basically you got one guy and right now he is machining four pieces at the same time. It just you frees know. him up for more productive work though. Yeah, one. and the cell just keeps running and he can focus on quality of the product and continually inspecting the product and making sure that it's, everything is running like it should. It's really maximizing not only your human capital, you know, your human component here, but it's letting them do things they're probably more happy to do than sitting there opening and closing vices yeah, and sweeping absolutely. the floor. Absolutely. And another thing that we've done to help out the operators, uh, this is a new offering from Sandvik. Um, so it's a tool supply system. Uh, it is stocked and the operators can come over. They can see those same blueprints for the tools and it holds a lot of product. This is all full of tooling in here right now. Yeah, and it's very simple for the operators to use. They, you know, put in their badge or their number and, you know, to identify who they are, what machine they're running. This thing is full of carousels of tools and it'll actually go down, highlight it. Opens it for you. Opens it up. You grab your tool, close the door. And there's our tool ready to go. Ready to go, put it in the machine. And that will track how many it has left in it, whether it needs to reorder. And it automatically reorders and signals our logistics team who can come over and refill it. The other thing I think would be really interesting for is being able to identify if you're, or one operator is blowing up a lot of one tool. Yes. Maybe you can identify <laughs> an issue that way. You know, Maybe they are loading incorrectly or maybe there's an issue. So there's a lot more information you can get from one of these than just tool use. Yeah, there is. And we also utilize OEE and that tells us some of that same information. So we can actually go in and see through Formont's OEE system, uh, if there's a tool breaking constantly, in what machine, when it was breaking, how many times it broke, everything. It keeps track of all that quality everything. information for you. Yep. So we can pull up those reports and say, hey, why are we breaking this tool all the time? Oh, then we can investigate and find out why. Chase it back to the root. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And now is this something you guys are implementing across yeah. your manufacturing? So we are working on it here. This is the first one of this style that we've gotten into the facility and it's fantastic. So People are liking it so far. Yeah, absolutely. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this tour as much as I did. Getting to go to see things that no one else has been able to see with a camera before is an absolute privilege and it was incredible to see firsthand. Thank you very much to everyone on the Sambic team for helping us out today and letting us come and check out what you have going on here. And if you're looking for some really innovative tooling solutions, you know to call Sambic. Make sure you turn on notifications below and like and subscribe to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching guys. You take care.